Here we are going to discuss graphs. To represent our game map, we will be using graphs. If you are not familiar with graphs, they are data structures that make it easy to represent how elements of the graph are connected with each other. Let's visit this website, Red Blob Games, Pathfinding, Grids, Graphs. So this depicts a map. This is a grid of cells. So we can see that each blue square is representing one cell, so one space on our map. And this space represents the minimum space where we can work on, so we can place a structure and the smallest structure can be of size one space. Now, if we click on this see the graph button, we can see that the grid is nothing more than a graph. So those blue circles are vertices. So vertex and those represent our spaces we can store data about the space so what is placed in this vertex another thing that the graph have is a green line so this thing and this is called edge and edges represent the relationship between vertices so this vertex and this vertex are connected using this edge. So this edge represents the relationship between those two vertices. So let's see how we will use graphs in our game. We have two types of structures that we plan to place on our map. This will be a road and a structure. So this will be depicted as a house on our map and road will be simply a road. Great. And you can see that our map is depicted as a graph, which will simply be the data. So this is the data structure that stores the information about what is going on on our map. At the start, our graph contains the vertices, so each vertex is of type empty and if it is then we can search for a path between each vertex and since this is the case each vertex is connected with its own neighbors by an edge meaning that we can create a road from this vertex to this vertex because every vertex here is empty now here comes the fun part as the data for each vertex, we are storing the type. So we have the type empty, we have type structure, and we have type road. So I'm going to write them on the graph as E empty. I'm not going to write in on each and every vertex that is empty. Let's assume that this is the default. And S for structure and R for road. Great. So as I have previously mentioned, if we start on our map from this point to this point and want to create a road, our algorithm will find a road by finding a path from this vertex to this vertex. And we are going to use a star algorithm implementation for it. So on our graph, if we have placed a road such as I have depicted on our map, on our graph, those vertices will become of type road we are going to store this data on our graph and here is where the things gets interesting i'm going to change the color for for example blue and if we have a pedestrian so let's uh, create a pedestrian on our map and this is joe joe wants to travel to the end of the road for example and joe asks a star a star find me a path that i can travel and let's say that pedestrians only can travel through a road. So the graph starts from the start and starts finding other vertices of type road by asking, are you a road? Are you a road? And since our pedestrian can only travel through a road, it can only travel through this small part of our graph. So let's depict that this graph represents our road. And each cell of type road can only 
be connected so only have an edge, so the relation, with another vertex of type road. Of course, we could create a road somewhere uh, here, uh, for example, so here can be a road, and this road is not connected with any other road here on our map, and it has no other connection between any of its own neighbors, this means that a man that is placed here cannot travel anywhere. So you can see how useful it is for us, uh, since we can find structures of type road and say to Joe, Joe, you can only travel to those points that have road on it. If you want to travel here, you can't because there is no road. And this allows us to create road and structures and say, for example, if we change the color to, uh, let's say this orange, and we want to place a structure, we can ask, can I place structure here? And the graph says, no, you can't because this is already a road. Can I place a structure maybe here? No, you can't because there is no road near the structure. So can I place structure here? Yes, you can because there is a road uh, as its neighbor. So the structure can be placed because each structure, for example, requires a road. So I know I'm going pretty fast through this, but the great stuff is this, that we can find this small part of the graph and says, the car and uh, a pedestrian can only travel through this part of the graph. It cannot travel on over here because there is no road and cars can only travel through a road in our game. So I hope you are getting the drift how useful graphs are. Currently we have found a way to place roads and structures. We have found a way to traverse roads by AI agent, so AI agent or a car can traverse our graph by searching for those small graphs that contains a road. Since a car or a pedestrian can only spawn on a road, it can ask our A star, how can I travel to another vertex on our graph? Or in other words, how can I travel to another space on our map? And our A star will only find this small piece of our graph, which contains a road. So one last usage that we have found is placing our structures with conditions. So place with condition. Meaning our house needs to be placed near a road. And if you want to know more about graphs and algorithms such as A star, I recommend you visit edx.org where you can for free enroll for a course called Advanced Algorithms and Graph Theory with Python. In the next video, we will create a starting project, get the resources from the GitHub link that I have posted in the description and see how we can start creating our simple city builder. See you in the next video.